Okay, what you are looking at here is the Nikon Coolpix 8800. This is a bridge camera that was made in 2005, and it belonged to my uncle, and is now essentially my property. It was one of my other relatives, but they gave it to me when... I needed a, a, an interim camera until I could get a replacement, maybe select one for Christmas or whatever. That's pretty much what the next is going to end up being. This camera I had not touched in three years, so it took me a while to figure out how to learn to use it again. Along the top here you have your power switch, your shutter release, function button, flash, exposure compensation, and a light for the display here. This is the only uh, non-DSLR um, point-and-shoot that I've seen with an external display on top. Along on your mode dial, you've got your uh, manual, aperture, shutter, and program modes. You've got your automatic, your playback. Now, there are a couple of more settings on here which I find rather strange. You have your white balance, and your ISO, and your picture quality. I don't know why you have these on the mode dial. I just find that strange. Same thing goes with the setup. You've got your movie mode and your scene mode, and we're back to manual. That's pretty much the whole business. Um, like I said, on here we have a display. Up here at the top, we have a hot shoe. I'm trying to... There we go. So we have ourselves a hot shoe, which I never use, so I want to try to keep this uh, in place as much as I can. There we go. Around the back, we have a rotational dial. I, that might be a little hard to make out. We've got a rotational dial. We've got our four-way directional pad here. There, now you can see it. We've got our four-way directional pad. We have our zoom rocker, we have an auto exposure, autofocus lock, a menu, we've got a quick preview button, a self timer, which also doubles as your trash, and then your display options, and we've got your electronic viewfinder, which you can switch to with this button here. And then we have, uh, let's see if I can make it easier for you to see this. Right, um, yeah, right here is a little dial that adjusts your, um, your diopter settings. Over here on the left, if I can get this out of the way, you see it's a 10 times zoom. Um, it's got the vibration reduction that Nikon's famous for. Now, what you're seeing here is one of my gripes with this camera. It's got the autofocus on the side of the barrel like many digital SLRs, except for one little thing. Instead of having it um, as a switch, like we have the vibration reduction on or off, you've got your autofocus button, and in order to manually focus, you need to hold this down and turn the thumb dial here on the back, which basically makes it a two-step process, and for me, it's a little bit uncomfortable. On the front, we have our, our lens here. This is a zoom lens, 10 times optical, as you just saw a moment ago. Okay, fine, stay off. Um, you have, get out of the way. On the side here, you have a door, and this door is for your memory card slot. And the camera takes compact flash memory cards. And then finally on the bottom, you have your, um, your hot shoe. And let's see if we can make this out. It's really, really hard to see. I do apologize. The lighting in here is not as good as I'd hoped. Um, well, anyway, right around where my hand is, the curvature of my hand here, let's see, can I 
zoom out. Uh, just take my word for it. The battery compartment's over there. Okay. Now, I'm going to flip out the screen here. I do apologize. I'm recording this with my iPhone and doing this in a one-handed form. I was thinking about waiting until I got the new camera to do this, but then I decided, nah. Okay. So, here's the display. Now, let me go ahead and use the switch up here at the top to turn it on. Okay, um, give me a moment. Let me go ahead and put on the lens cap, make things easier on the, to see on the screen. Okay, apparently this thing thinks there's no card in in here. So, yeah, no card. Let me fix that. All right. So, we've got our uh, typical display options here. Vibration reduction is active. Um, I'm having a really hard time making that out below, below there. Ah, there we go, that's better. We have our metering options, manual, uh, manual mode. Our shutter speed is 1 30th of a second. Aperture set to 5.0. Um, 8 megapixel normal for the picture quality. 415 shots remaining on this card. Day, the white balance is set to indoors. Um, indoors incandescent. And that's about it. Um, we've also got uh, several different modes to choose from. If I go ahead and get into the menu here by hitting the menu key, and then I will navigate using the... Um, oh, okay. There we go. And I will navigate using the arrows here. It's really, really hard to see. I do apologize, but in order to get in to a lot of these um, settings, you need to, need to go into the menu. And incidentally, for those of you who have been following my videos, I have decided on one of the next series cameras. Although, depending on how frustrated I get with actually going through the menus 100%, this time around and what I find out in the coming months about the next cameras that may end up changing though I'm not sure the next looks like a really good bargain um, for now let's just stick with this you can't even see that can you I do apologize um let's see if I can go in and adjust the display brightness hang on let's see Oh, one thing I forgot to mention was that ISO is set to 400. That's the maximum this camera can handle, and I apologize. I cannot find... Um, let's see, if I go into the quick menu... No. Yeah, I cannot find... Um, I'm sorry, but I cannot find the... Um, I, can't, I just can't... Oh, wait, now you can see it. <laughs> But anyway, you can... Let's take a look here. Hmm. This is pretty much all you have, but as you can see, you have to go through the menus to adjust everything. And you could... Basically, rotate, cho um, choose any everything by the dial. But the trouble is, if we go into, say, metering... 
we could go into this menu here and choose matrix, spot, center, weighted, and so forth, or we could stay out here. The trouble is, when we stay out here, the only thing that changes is the symbol. So if you're first starting out, it's really better to go directly into the menus. But as you can see, over time, this can get very, very annoying um, as you pick up your skills. Let me just show you, see if I can show you how to autofocus with this thing. Um, again, it's a two-step process, so I'm not sure I'll be able to pull this off. You have to hold down the AF button. Now you've got your expo you've got your focusing points right there. Um, you've got nine of them. Okay, now in order to move the in order to get back into manual focus, I actually have to go in and move. And I apologize, my finger keeps getting in the way. Or actually, no, it's the next strap. Um, but in order to go in, just take my word for it, I would have to basically hit the button and then move the dial, which um, if you're trying to really, really get your focusing um, spot on with this, it can be a real pain in the neck um, to have to hold that button down for quite a while because the focusing on this thing, and even with manual, it's just incredibly slow. Um, let's go ahead and switch this off before the battery decides to kill on me. rotate this around because there was one more thing I wanted to show you. Um, right there. Right above the red triangle. That is an IR sensor. This camera does have the facility for a remote port. Also, um, unfortunately you couldn't see this in the menus, but if I were able to go in and adjust um, the picture quality, one of the things this can do is shoot in RAW. And back in 2005, you know, shooting in RAW with a point-and-shoot, you know, this camera definitely was not cheap. But um, you give it, you fast-forward about six years, and it's amazing to see how how things have have um, evolved, even in Nikon's own camp. Um, because a maximum ISO of 400 is not even heard of nowadays. So... That's pretty much it. This is the Coolpix 8800. Before anybody asks, um, until I can evaluate the image quality, I need to spend some more time with this. I have not touched this camera in three years, so I need to basically reacquaint myself with it. I've managed to get myself uh, reacquainted with how the controls work, but I need to spend some more time taking pictures to, to, get, to get the feel of it again. So, uh, yeah. Alright, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching, comments are welcome, and have a nice day.